everybody can go ahead and see what we've got here in front of your screen. Um, if this is not the workshop that you intended to join, now is your chance to leave. But hopefully <laughs> you uh, came to the crux this, for this workshop for our Apps for Kids um, presentation. Um, so we'll have about an hour or so um, to work today um, in the Apps for Kids program. Um, we'll introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about the description for the challenge, that being an aquatic enrichment item. Um, then I'll hand it back over to Chin Lu, who will dive into the Apps for Kids program um, software. And then we'll really get to design and create a prototype creation yourself. So we'll spend most of this workshop here designing something that we can potentially um, send off to, to some folks at an aquarium nearby. So, um, so here we go. Um, Chin Lu is a UX designer for Dassault Systems. Um, I, Aiden, am the Education Programs Manager for the FAB Foundation. Um, and we are excited that you're joining us here today. Um, and one of the reasons we're here today uh, is this Water for Life campaign that the SO Systems has put together in the past year. Um, it's a commitment to um, creating and conserving um, systems to conserve water um, in a commercial space. And so one of the ways that um, we've created an excitement around this program or this initiative um, is to really excite students, excites the um, create educational programs around this Water for Life initiative. And so one way that Dassault Systems has in the past is they've done, an, uh, as part of World Oceans Day, created a SolidWorks Apps for Kids activity where you and your students could create some type of aquatic life, um, as in the case with this octopus here, um, using the Apps for Kids software. Um, and so this got me thinking a little bit about kind of my interests and my own personal experience and the job before this one, um, which in fact was uh, working at Shed Aquarium in Chicago, Illinois. Um, I had the opportunity, as you can see in this picture here, to do a lot of really cool, amazing things. In this picture in particular, I was working uh, with an iguana conservation team in the Bahamas, um, where yes, I got to go for work to the Bahamas and uh, capture and then release iguanas while recording their morphometrics metrics and things and things like that. Um, but in addition to that, I got a chance to work with the octopus team. Um, and this was by far the coolest um, at shed program that we offered. Um, we had a chance to bring in a group of middle school teenagers um, from the local from a local school and have them interact with the octopus with sheds octopus. And one of the ways we did that is we asked the octopus team at the aquarium, what is something that you might need in order to improve the life or enrich this animal's uh, habitat at the aquarium? And so they said, well, we could use some type of puzzle feeder. And so that problem right there, that connection, allowed us to begin working with the middle schoolers to create enrichment items like the ones that you see here. So we had these, these are my designs, but I'll show you some in, uh, that the students created in just a second. Had students create on paper a sketch of what they wanted, then using clay modeling, actual physical clay, create that item, and then take that item and design it in a 3D environment, like the one in the kind of third picture there, to then ultimately 3D print. Um, now, these weren't items that we necessarily gave to the octopus. We didn't just simply print and then drop it into the octopus's habitat. They served more so as prototypes of this particular item um, that we could potentially use. So here is a, a, a great example. One group of middle schoolers created um, this puzzle feeder for the octopus um, where I, I suppose the octopus is pushing some sort of button uh, or had almost like a, like a dog toy or kind of like those star, square, circle items that you might give like a, a three-year-old of some sort to figure out um, shapes. But this was something that we were able to, to do with the octopus team. Um, and was a really exciting and enriching experience for the teens to connect with aquatic life and thereby water. Um, so as part of this challenge today, this is kind of a, uh, it is expanding on the Water for Life initiative through the DISO systems. And so our challenge today is to use apps for kids to design an improved prototype enrichment item similar to this previous activity um, for one of two aquatic animals. So I reached out to Shed Aquarium and asked both uh, two different uh, aquatic life teams, what is something that they might need from us? And so the first was the octopus team. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, what do you guys need? What would what, what something 
Um, it's me again, that crazy guy that 3D printed things for you. What is something that would be helpful? And so this is the prop they gave me. They said, we could use an hourglass shaped tube for her to travel through, partially transparent and then long, roughly five feet. Now, we won't have any of you today create or print something that's five feet long, but we might have you print something or at least design something that is roughly this type of shape. Um, and then with the material, we can have it be transparent. But the goal is to have them have food at the end of one end of this hourglass shape to then train the octopus to go through and then retrieve the item through the other side. And so here's a quick example here of kind of what that can look like in other giant Pacific octopuses. They can squeeze their entire bodies through something that's just the hole uh, or through something that's just big enough to fit their beak. Yes, octopuses have beaks very much like a parrot or like another bird. Um, so as long as that beak, which is this black obsidian looking shape um, that use, they use to eat their food or eat their prey, as long as it can fit through that hole, uh, which is only about an inch, they can squeeze through that shape. Now, the other team that I reached out to, I'm gonna see if I can stop playing this video here and move on to the next slide instead, um, was the archer fish team. And this is a really cool animal as well. This is an animal that lives, uh, I believe in the Amazon. And what they do is they hunt their prey very much like an archer would, hence the name, by shooting a spray of water at insects that are on low hanging branches just below or just above the water surface. So here's a little another quick video here of the archer fish uh, hunting their prey. So hopefully you can see this kind of slow motion capture of the archer fish and he just shoots this really quick spray. It knocks the animal off of the leaf, the low hanging leaf there and uh, eats said said animal. Um, they're incredible and they can apparently modulate the amount of water and the distance um, through all kinds of mechanisms that I am fully unaware of. But their team um, messaged us and said, we could really use something that I'll show you in this next slide here that looks kind of like a floating log, kind of like a log with, with limbs hanging off the sides of it. Um, this is what they've used in the past. This is something they, they sent to me. Um, and what we're looking for in this particular challenge here is that the problem that they had with that previous shape is that crickets would stay on the bottom of that log um, so that the archer fish couldn't see them. I mean, the crickets were smart enough to hide on that log so that they obviously wouldn't get eaten. But we need to create something that would ideally be of a similar shape, but not allow crickets to, to congregate or hide on that lower um, part of the, of the branch there. So, um, I'm going to hand it back off to Chin Lu in just a second here, but your goal today is to design some kind of item using the apps for kids um, to create this prototype enrichment item. And if, if you design something that you're really excited about, what we can do is we can send the file either to me um, or to whoever here, and I can 3D print that and send it off to Shed Aquarium for the aquarists to hopefully use in their exhibits. So that's our goal. That is our, hopefully our practical use for today's workshop. Um, and I'm gonna hand it back off to, to Chin Lu here. So um, Chin Lu, I'm going to try to exit this screen here. And there we go, take it away. I'll sneak off this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm actually gonna start, we are doing a little bit of adjustment um, to the way we run uh, this, session. I was anticipating a hands-on workshop, so we're going to try to do this as much virtually as possible. So if you go to swappsforkids.com, um, and hopefully that's visible, I will try to copy this and share it in a much more visible way. As You will actually see kind of the brain dump here. There was actually supposed to be a completely different agenda. So we are going to try something different. Um, and I can't get to my pool because this thing's in the way. Oh, please. Oh, where am I? I'm going to try to present it so you guys can see it. Oh, yeah, so this is the URL you would want to use. If you can get there, but you can actually play along. So once you get to this website, you will be able to just try right now and sign up. 
Um, and if you, I will also be showing an alternative. So if you try right now, this is an individual account that you can go right in and do some of the things I'm gonna show. A, an aspect that I'm gonna talk about today is actually classroom. Um, Apps for Kids also has a, uh, an educators kind of environment. And in this environment, you can actually run your own little workshop. So if you decide to do an individual contribution, go ahead and try this out. But if you wanted to run a little workshop with folks that you are either um, educating or because you wanted to have a fun group event, um, you can go ahead and sign up for a classroom account. So under the educators section um, and down at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see that there's a classroom apps environment and you can sign up that way. We're not using that today, um, mostly for you guys to sign up, mostly because it takes about three days for us to process uh, a request. But if you try the, the link above, you can try that separately, um, just with the apps, not the classroom environment. So I'm just trying to be clear there. But I will be demonstrating in the classroom environment. It's very similar. So let's jump in, and I'm going to take on a few challenges um, that Aiden mentioned. But before I do, I'm going to give you guys uh, kind of like a lay of the land. Um, so let me actually give you a slight uh, comparison. So if you had tried, oops, that's not good. Maybe that's not going to work. I take that back. I think, let me just stay with the classroom, <laughs> apologize. Um, if you were to log into the try today uh, and you're playing along, just ignore some of these things that have to do with classroom. But when I jump into shape it very soon, you'll, you'll be able to do the same thing uh, alongside. So if you, on the uh, event that you've gotten uh, an organi organization request accepted and you now have a classroom to manage, you can actually, um, have enough ability to invite other educators or other folks onto the team who may be managing classes within that environment. Um, you can also assign uh, individual student accounts. So you can manage all of these to allow um, folks to collaborate and design a challenge. Um, this is great for like Cub Scouts, for school, after school activities, um, that kind of environment. For teachers, for educators, you are inviting them th through their email accounts and you can um, easily do that by just sending them an invitation. That's kind of how I invited Aiden to my classroom. Um, you can also, I actually set up a bunch of dummy teachers thinking that, dumb, dummy teacher accounts thinking that folks will be here to enjoy it, but we're gonna try this differently. Um, students, we have designed it in such a way where you don't need to have um, emails for every child, that's, every student that's gonna join because we understand that there could be a situation where um, the students are too young to own an email account. So you would basically, whoever the educator is that creates the account would be the one that actually sets up um, a student account. And so you can run a workshop with that group of people uh, as you see fit. Um, and you also have the opportunity to set up specific classes or specific challenges. In this case, I'm just, I set up one for today's workshop, but you could have one that's like the octopus team challenge or the um, Archer Fish Team Challenge, and you can invite specific individuals, educators, and students into those individual classes. And lastly, uh, if you are gung ho and you want to run this on your own, have an activity for your classroom, um, you can get some inspiration. We have a bunch of sample lessons that um, that have been created to uh, address certain aspects of. Um, specific scientific methods or design thinking. It also, you can download the lesson plan, which actually talks a lot about what actually is involved in the activity and how it meets certain um, uh, particular scientific standards. Uh, let me just give you an example so you can see. So for this particular one is about animals and habitats. So, you know, with the aquarium projects, this that could easily be yet another um, lesson plan that can be uh, created, but this does give you a, a starting point if you have an idea of what you want to do. Um, I'm going to just jump ahead and show you that at the end of kind of the how to and how to and how it applies to science in the field, there's also a whole rubric that explains like how this particular lesson could meet 
um, certain aspects of the science curriculum. Um, and this also speaks to the next generation science standards. So these, again, I'm only showing you one, but there's a, a large collection here that you can leverage. Some of them are for mechanisms, nano machines, quite interesting stuff. And you can, you can sign up for this account and it's completely free. Um, in fact, if you're on that website that I brought you to, you can actually see some of those sample lesson plans right in this area. There's a few here that you can click on and view. Just get a taste of it. All right, so let's jump right into the, I have that one class, but before we jump in there, I wanted to show you some of the things that you can do. So this portion of it, before we do that, yes. do you want to check the waiting room and see if we have anybody waiting to join the room? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, let's see. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah, please submit your questions into the, the session if, if I'm moving along. We'll have a break later where we can try to get back to the Q&A. Um, would you make myself the bottom right there the host? Um, more. No. There you go. Is there anything else? Any other? Mute it. <laughs> All right. Thank Sorry. You. Yep. No problem. Thank you. We're gonna get some moderators to help us out. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Let me let me get back to my project. So if you have um, gone ahead and tried to get an account with apps for kids and you're playing along, great. Otherwise, I'm gonna jump right in. So um, I started. Um, a particular shape. Let's actually take on the octopus feeder. Um, I'm going to actually start completely brand new. I wanted to show some ways that you could use Shape It to get some of those hourglass shapes or, or fun things that you can do uh, as you create. So let's call this Octo Shape. And what we have in Shape It is almost like an environment where you can play with digital clay. You can begin with various um, primitives, um, basic shapes. I'm actually gonna try a cone. Um, if I'm aiming for a particular hourglass sh shape, I'm gonna start with this. There's some neat tricks to this. Um, first of all, you can scale it by dragging these yellow dots as you like. Um, if you click away, you now have the ability to play with um, kind of pulling and pushing different ele elements of the, of the shape as you like. Um, and then another element you can try is just, there's a plus and a minus down here. This is more along the lines, if, if you have kids that love mine, mine, Minecraft, blah, 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 you can actually start uh, adding little blobs um, to it as if you're adding block. An even more obvious view is if you select the whole body and then crisp it up. Oops, that is not what I meant to do. Um, there's a little sharpen button here. If you do, you can actually see that it's actually all blocky. Um, so as they add shapes to it, it will look like they're adding little blocks to a shape. I'm actually not going to do that because it'll be too prickly for the, the octopus. So I'm gonna actually try to make this all smooth again. Now I'm gonna try to make an hourglass out of this. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take the shape on the bottom and I'm just gonna reflect it and mirror it on top. Um, actually, another way I can view this model instead of just in perfect 3D is using this little command up here and looking at things in a very orthogonal way. This is a very good way to appreciate the different views of the model. So I'm gonna actually enlarge the bottom a little bit so it looks more, um, di more different uh, between the, the top and the bottom. So I'm going to actually mirror this above. So I'm gonna select a face here. There's actually um, a mirror command here in the context menu. If you do that, it automatically will give you a nice, almost like a, a bone shape. I didn't realize how incredibly bone-like it was gonna look kind of cool. Um, you can also continue to play with it. You see the mirror maintains. I can make, maybe make it a little bit more are glassy. Now I want to make sure I have a hole in it that the octopus can kind of crawl through. I can select, uh, let's see, I'm going to do 
not try to select all four of these spaces, I'm using shift on the keyboard and clicking all of them. And I'm going to roll myself onto the other side using the middle mouse button or the right mouse button. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I've con connect or selected two sides of the of the piece plus um, they're kind of the same number on the uh, of faces on the bottom as well as the top. By doing so, I can actually do this control called bridge. What that does is take the two faces and just kind of carry them, bridge them together. And when it's done inside a model, you actually get a nice hole in it. What I'm noticing is I may have gotten this a little bit too narrow in the middle. So I'm gonna try to fan it up so I don't get unprintable shapes. Let's try that again. And then bridge, here we go. Now we have a nice little um, tube that the octopus can go through. So that's a good way of kind of creating something from, from scratch. And it's constantly being saved. So um, hopefully this means that you will never lose work or the student will never lose work. Another way to, to um, work with this is, for example, if this is in a classroom environment, and let's say you created a shape. I actually created this. Um, archer fish stand. Um, I had envisioned this kind of clipping on the side of an aquarium with a little pedestal. What I can do is share it. Let's say I'm the instructor and I want to share it with my class. Um, in the classroom environment, you have the ability to go ahead and share it to a particular classroom that you've created. In this case, the Fab 16 Astro Kids Workshop. I'm going to share that. Actually, I'm not going to carry on this step because I actually did it. So Pressing, it, pressing share will actually bring a copy over there and I'll show you exactly that. In my classes, there is an archer fish stand for people to reference. Here, if you, your challenge is for students to go ahead and take this and make it their own, do something that makes sense for them, what they can do is actually create this riff copy um, from it. And when they do, it will appear in their personal project section. And in here, they can go ahead and just do whatever they see fit. Perhaps they want to do, as, as the brief said, a log. So maybe what I'll do is make it so this is more like a log. Um, maybe increase it a little bit. Oops. Um, maybe carrot over, short in the bottom. You know, so basically you can do a lot of things by just playing around with this. So maybe that part will float somehow or mount onto a larger piece. Maybe I want this to top to look more like a leaf and bend down. So what you can do is when you have things selected, there's a little section in the middle that if you toggle, it goes between translation movable arrows to these um, circular rotating um, arches, rings. So I can actually go ahead and tilt it a little bit maybe just the front end might tilt a little bit. So these are all controls that you can go ahead and play with. Also, if you decide that maybe this doesn't look as much like a leaf, um, you want to do something cooler, you can, again, move all of these bits um, as you like and even add to it. Maybe this is a very long leaf. So all these shapes, once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and share it back. To the class. So maybe this one is Archer Veers and um, Jin Lu. Oops. So it, it's clear that is my idea. And once I'm done with it, I can actually go back and share it back into the classroom. Can we bring up some other questions? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so Jerome asked if um, it's possible to check out the link that he had sent in the chat. He's having difficulty with an unknown error entering the email. Yeah, we're having the same problem trying to sign up an account. Oh, really? Uh, With that same account? Yeah, if you, if, uh, if you click sign up, it just gives you a green unknown error. With this link on the bottom or the one on top? Uh, I believe it's that mm -hmm. one. Oh. This one. Or the one on top. Oh, yikes. Sorry. Oh, interesting. Oh. So we could try a class room account. But you can't do the try only. Like this try now doesn't work. 
Yeah, yeah. I did this right now. That's the one that I did as well. And then you guys filled this in and it didn't move this on? Is oh, okay. That's a problem. Okay. Um, I can't troubleshoot right now, but we will hopefully, Marie, if you're still on the call, can you shoot us an email to Harish? If not, I will follow up. We, get, we need to sort some of these things out. Um, as far as I know, it was working before, but we should probably make sure that you guys can actually try it out. Um, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. Um, one other question was uh, if it's possible to do this on mobile. Yes. Okay. So you can uh, on an iPad, I, iPhone, uh, Google, Chromebook, every platform because it's web based. Okay. As long as there's internet, you should be able to use it. Um, we do have to say that the interactions have been optimized for mouse interactions. So if you have a touch device, it should still work, but there are a few bugs that we're still working out. So it's not 100%. Um, I would say definitely it's auto load. You should be able to rotate it. You should be able to do all the things we just showed you by adding things. Um, but as long as you have an internet connection. Is there another one? No, that's all the questions for now. Cool. Sorry, you can't play it along, but um, let, me <laughs> let me reassure you. It does, does work when you can get past. Um, once I share it in class, you'll see that there's some mechanisms here to help you uh, if you are the instructor. Um, I don't have enough here to really uh, filter since it's all posted by me. But the idea here, here is that you should be able to, if you wanted to see all the submission from a certain number of students, you can go ahead and highlight them. Um, and so as the class progresses and you have lots of iterations building upon iterations or um, submissions from various people, or you just wanna see if everyone got a chance to hand in a, an idea this is a good mechanism to filter both by the students and by the teachers. Um, yeah, so if you look at me, it is, it's all coming from me. <laughs> but another element too, I didn't actually show this. If in class, students wanted to review certain things before they say, yeah, this is the one I wanted to download, they can actually, there's a little preview that they can go ahead and dive into and take a look. So in all of these cases, if it's 3D, if it's 2D, whatever it is, they can actually interact with it without having to actually make a copy to themselves into their own account. Um, coming back to my account, let's see. Another thing I wanted to show is as you get submissions from the students and or, or they themselves have access to a 3D printer, there's some really fun things you can do beyond uh, the 3D print or 3D modeling aspect. So we made this um, Archer fish stand. Um, perhaps one thing I wanted to do is maybe get a nice vision or visualization of what it, it might be. So I'm gonna use the Stylet app here. So the shape has been done, but I wanted to actually improve it by maybe coloring it. Um, so one thing I would do is come in here and say, it's gonna be a little bit more um, dark, uh, probably woodsy. So let's change it to like a brown. And maybe the leaf portion I want green. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight, um, I'm gonna paint and paint just that portion and make it green. So now I have like a little leaf hang off like a wooden log perhaps. Maybe I want it to be even more realistic and I want to actually draw some veins on this leaf. I'm not quite sure it's gonna come out, but um, let's make this a little fatter. I can go ahead and just draw right underneath and I can draw however I want because it will only appear on the model in that in nothingness basically so you can be as messy as you like um, another cool thing you could do is um, add stickers so maybe um, I wouldn't do this to those poor fish but I'll stick a big giant eyeball in the back um, or maybe that's your logo uh, who knows um, and yeah, these stickers basically will, will adhere to the object on whatever face you stick on. The archer fish do respond to targets, so you could Ooh, put a target. That could target. be a target. That definitely looks like a target. In fact, I can change it into maybe a red. I don't know if red makes any difference, but you could change the color. <laughs> um, so that those are fun things that you can do, target practice and also a bug sitting on top. Um, ultimately, you can also put this behind a scene, although 
I don't think we have an aquarium theme. Um, let's see. We do have a reef. I guess this is not super accurate since, but the idea is that, you know, for, for class, if you wanted to do some sort of um, example, you may put it into like a scene that we created pre-made. Um, so you can actually see, there's some fun little graphics here. Um, there's like a food stand, fun things, but um, you can do all that. You can even just choose a blank color and that will work as well. So those are all options. I'm gonna stick this wreath back in because it's cool. Once you're happy with it, um, this is where you can take it onto the printed app. So I'm gonna bring it all the way to, so you, you're seeing the cycle of all of the creation apps and how they kind of hand off one, one to another and how it could be a complete story of your teaching uh, manufacturing, like design to manufacturing and how you go from an idea to something in your hands. Um, so this printed app is quite powerful. There are multiple things you can do here. Um, I'll go actually from middle to the right to the left. Um, 2D printing is probably the most obvious anyone can, you know, if you have a 2D printer with color, this is what you can do. You can actually re re-pose however you want your model to look. Um, and then you can decide to include uh, the mesh lines or not, and then go ahead and just print it. Another option is you can, if you wanted to create even more fun for even younger students, you can create color by number sheets. Um, I don't know how well this is coming through. It's very light, but you'll see that um, I do only have two colors, green and brown. Um, but you, you can see as I move the model around, those numbers snap to the areas that ought to be brown and ought to be green. So that's a fun little thing. Um, another cool aspect, if you only have 2D printing and not 3D printing tool, this is something we call uh, box print, Q print, sorry. Um, it's the idea that we're taking the model, flattening it out into its orthogonal view. So this is a nice secret way of teaching people uh, mechanical drawings um, or just the, the different aspects of a view. And once you print this out as a 2D print, you can cut it up, fold it up into like an origami box, tape it together or glue it. Now you have actually the 3D object in your hand, maybe not 3D printed, but now you have um, basically your object inside a cage. And then lastly, you can 3D print this. Um, we do have uh, a way to out um, download an STL, so you can use it in any printer. But you can also, we partner with Sindo. If you happen to have a Sindo printer, I think it's a, oh gosh, I can't remember the model number anymore. But um, there's step-by-step -step instructions on how to, to synchronize the two, two machines. Uh, the 3D box, box um, is the brand. And you can actually set it up so that you can just send this model over and it'll just print directly as if you're sending to a 2D. Then you can also play with like sizing, how many you want in there. It does do some level of a, uh, oops, that's just way too big. Yeah, so you can start stacking them up, well, a lot of them. Um, primarily that's printed. And I think I went through that super fast so that people can ask more questions. So we can do like specific deep dives into areas sure. and also some time for closing comments. So I think I'm done with what I wanted to show here, but I'm happy to dive deeper into wherever people have questions um, about how you can leverage apps for kids. Awesome. Just also while we're at it, I, I've been asked to kind of mention this. This is like offshoot, but I kind of use capture it as a way to do presentations instead of a PowerPoint or slide. But um, we do want to promote kind of the, the theme of uh, um, the Fab 16 this time from SOLIDWORKS that we are making a big deal about um, having the SOLIDWORKS for makers uh, capability. It's, it's actually a very powerful set of tools um, and it's, you can learn more about it at SOLIDWORKS.com slash maker. So that's the last plug, but yeah, let's dive into the fun stuff. That's great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, do we have any additional questions? As I see off, as a, a voice off in the distance here. Hello. <laughs> um, do we have any additional questions or questions um, for uh, for Shinlu to answer about the apps for kids software or um, using this with students and how you might be able to use this with your classrooms um, in the future? Or um, we'd love to hear if you have any questions about um, this particular software. Um, 
one thing I'll note is um, I think this is such a great tool, especially for younger students. So things like um, the, you know, the, those of you who are working with younger students, typically it's difficult to figure out how to apply 3D printing or 3D printing um, or even 3D design concepts with your students. This is such a, a, a useful and helpful tool, especially for the younger audiences. Um, and as I showed in the, the presentation, taking something from a design on paper to clay to now a 3D environment is so um, easy to do. And so um, it, it looks, the apps for kids software looks like clay um, digitally. I think I'm stealing that from Marie here, but it's such a malleable um, process of moving and shaping some of these items here um, that uh, students will, should have a pretty easy grasp of the transition from clay to uh, 3D environment through this Apps for Kids software. Um, so um, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, we're happy to answer. We've got some questions here live in person for us. Luciana, go ahead and answer your question. Sure. Uh, it may be a little technical, but I'm quite curious. Is it using sub D for the, for the yep. model? Yep, it's subdivision, subdivision modeling, yeah. So it has lots of the, it's, what you don't see is the cage that's around it that essentially is shaping all of the curves. Very that's cool. why when you sharpen, it kind of snaps right to the cage. Right. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's actually um, some things that I've seen other kids do is they don't start with the shape and very much like um, Minecraft. So if you just start anywhere um, and then just make sure this is sharpened. Mm -hmm. So all the steps you do afterwards is you just, it's like almost like you're just building. Yeah. Mm. So you could do some really neat shapes this way. And then you can switch back. You can right click to delete. Yeah, you can always switch back. Left click to add, right click to delete. And you can always go back and say soft, smooth it up. And now it looks like a worm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's also, yes. I was able to get my account. Started. Oh, so I mean, you want to try again. So the error, they, they might have fixed it already. Maybe. Maybe Marie did some magic while we were talking. <laughs> she has a lot of pull, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you want to try using that link, um, I believe that Jerome posted in the chat there. Let's try to have participants sign up for the Apps for Kids program um, so that you can begin to model something, play around with the software. And if it's, if it's amazing, if it's fantastic, we'll I'll send it off to either me and I can print it out for Shed Aquarium staff. What, while we're waiting for more comments, um, I didn't show Mechit. Yeah, let's show that. Should I? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'll moderate the chat while you're doing that. Okay. Um, while you guys are playing, I, I, I'll do this in the background, but um, what you could do um, if you have another challenge that maybe makes you know, a moving target for the archer fish. <laughs> but um, if you wanted to play with mechanisms, um, mech it allows you to design um, like a two-dimensional view of, of uh, levers and wheels and whatnot. So in this case, you know, I'm actually just drawing a few linkages and it will automatically snap. And you can see it also has some level of like physics built into it. Um, gaming physics, probably not real physics, but um, I can pin something down. Uh, let's see, anchor it. So, oops, that's probably not what I meant to do. I wanted to pin that little guy down. There we go. So now I have this ability to kind of put in some motion. And I can also throw in a marker that leaves behind a trail as I'm, so I can actually see the motion as it moves around. And let's say I put in a motor you'll see that it, you know, I didn't build in a lot of sophistication. So obviously it's just gonna make me a big giant circle. Um, you can add some other level of sophistication. Let's see, we'll do a little bit of a wheel and maybe um, another arm. And there's also tracks that I wanted to show you where you can actually um, I guess I don't need two tracks. If you have another mechanism that's coming towards the track, the instant you snap to the track, it will build a little slider, rider, I think that's what they're called. So if this one is fixed and this can move, you see how it's kind of like locked into this track. So 
So there's some level of um, control. Let's see, let me see if I can make this thin. And then maybe we can add a little marker here. You can also change marker colors. So there's a lot of uh, play. Not uh, obviously doing as much as I can, but you can also adjust speed. So you can imagine like you can do like a spirograph, you can do like automaton that writes certain words as you do it, or even like I mentioned, if you wanted the moving target on the leaf, you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, this is a good, another app that you can play with. Um, I have better, uh-oh, I'm losing battery. <laughs> so it says my Mac's about to go to sleep in a minute. Um, I don't have a plug. Oh, no, it doesn't. Sorry. In case this falls out, I'm running out of battery. I forgot to bring my charger. Um, any questions so far? Any more? We might have to end this earlier. So, oh, do we want to switch it over? Okay. Sounds good. I don't know why I didn't cross my mind to bring a charger. Um, what else can I show? I was trying to get into my account where I have more examples. Here you go. Um, here's an example of a clever one. Um, so I, this is not my creation. Someone more awesome than I did this, but um, made a little smiley face with this mechanism. And then there's also another mechanism here. Uh, one of our classmates or co colleagues, she was designing a, um, oh, Great. She's designing a um, mechanical finger or hand, sorry, uh, as part of the Enable Hands project. So she was illustrating how a finger would cur curl. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Power drink. Excuse me, there are uh, outlets on the underside of the table. Okay. Um, and this is another way for you to illustrate some of these mechanisms. Um, thank you so much. I don't know, any other, Are you, have you guys been playing with it? Let me show you another cool one. I mentioned the bridge tool. Uh, another way of using the bridge tool is, for example, um, let's see if I want to truly bridge two things. So if I have a, another shape here, and I wanted to connect the two shapes, I can actually grab a face on it. Um, and maybe this one. We have one question in the chat. Oh, yeah. Um, so Ui, I think, um, is hyping up. That are asking if, are there templates um, that we can start with or tweak before starting our own idea? Um, yes and no. So in this, this three, uh, this account that's not classroom, they're both free, by the way. In the beta site, which is the one that's more specifically the apps, you can start from a good place to start is the public projects. If you find something that someone else has created that you find interesting and you want to riff and build off of it, like this this um, whale that, you know, even just some of these other shapes, and you just want to build onto it, you would just riff and then get that to begin with and start that way. In the classroom accounts, um, I mentioned uh, the area where you get sample lessons. In here, um, you actually not only can get the PDF lesson plans, but there's a the column here that says sample contents. That's where you can actually begin with some things. For example, the animals in Habitat that I mentioned about. If I click on this, you get a, a set of um, shapes inside your project. So if you go to my projects, you'll see now the animals and habitat has sample shapes that you can, as an instructor, you don't have to create things from scratch. You can actually use this content and share it into your classroom and people can actually start working directly with that. So hopefully that is a good way of getting you started without having to do from scratch. There's one here that I really liked. 
think it was about the dolphin tail. But um, anyway, it, it had both mechanism and shape. Um, okay, well, I think it might be the wearable, no, not wearable device. Anyway, <laughs> I can't off the top of my hand remember where it is. But it was a really fun one. Huh. Yeah, there's some drone stuff. There's even space. Um, Keychains. These quick starts are different than um, the regular lesson plan. Quick starts have a much more um, direct, like this is like one of your first things that you want to do. Not something as sophisticated as like the animal habitat. And these two don't really have that curriculum kind of tie back because this is more like this get you started kind of thing. So in this one, this uh, keychain one actually is just, uh, in fact, there's no written content. It just gives you a nice um, starter shape. Mm -hmm. So if you go there, you have all of these to work with. You have little like uh, principal, um, uh, what are they called? You have all these letters to attach to it and you also have the medallions or yeah, they have little keychain hooks that you can 3D print immediately, size to whatever you need to. So you notice that Astro Kids doesn't have rulers or dimensions or anything like that. It was intentional to not intimidate brand new designers because you don't have kids like bring out the yardstick while they play with clay, you know, that kind of thing, or tape measure. But as we work with more and more educators, we're finding that it is some, still important to have some level of uh, reference. Like I, I know I need to fit, through, fit this thing inside a particular shape. So we are working on the idea of like, how do we provide just the right amount of dimensioning, but not so much that it overwhelms some of the kids. It's just so you you know, Astro Kids were designed specifically for kids four to 14. So if you have, you know, very elementary school students, you wouldn't necessarily um, need to have that, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, Marie says she's creating a new dolphin tail. Oh, good. <laughs> what is the, Marie, what is the lesson called? I can't. Why can't I find it? Uh, anyway, yeah, that one's really cool. Maybe that's why it's not here. Maybe it's being created. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I can't find it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's right there. Jeez. So, so you'll also see that some says the name and then it says design thinking. So the only really big difference between the two is that there's material in the PDF that actually has a journal, a design thinking journal that you can also print out with a PDF. So for older students who you want them to document their design process um, and it has prompt uh, questions to prompt them to think differently, that is within this section. So I would definitely recommend looking into that. So let me see if I can run this and we can take a look. Yeah, so this is a dolphin tail one. Um, you will see that there's guidance on how to use the apps and then there's some shape it content as well as style it. So ways to color and draw and design on the shapes. There's also content to talk about the real world application um, how prosthetics can be used um, in the real world, which is great literature, um, lots of links in there. And this is what I mean, the design thinking process. So these are the sheets that you would include for uh, steps in how you might want to approach the design process um, with your students. And there's the rubric again, uh, as well as the standards. Um, so plenty to work with if you're, if you're just starting out. You want to do a yeah. close out? No, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, amazing. Thank you, Chun So, um, like we said, um, please play around. I'll take my mask off. Please play around with the Apps for Kids um, design software. We're excited to see what uh, you can create or what maybe your students create. Um, what I'll do is, um, Chun I hope it's okay. I put your email in the chat or in this uh, last slide here. Um, but if you have questions um, about apps for kids, you can direct those questions towards uh, Chin Lu. 
Um, if you have questions about um, applying this with your students in your classrooms or getting in contact with Shed Aquarium, um, I am more than happy to answer those questions for you. Um, but we're excited to see what you create. Um, if you've got screenshots, share them with us. Um, and thanks for joining us today. Um, if there are any additional questions, Jin Lu, we can answer them here. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today, um, both virtually and in person here. Um, and uh, excited to see what, what you'll create. So thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your day and have a great conference. <laughs>